Okay guys, I'm going to try to give you a run through of the testing guide. There is a lot, uh, and so I just want you to be aware of it. Uh, there's 53 pages to go through. I'm gonna try to make this uh, quick and easy. I just want us to run through it together so that you're aware of how this process is gonna work and what is gonna be required of you. Um, and hopefully this will make the uh, day of process a lot easier. So just bear with me, it's gonna take a little bit to go through. Uh, so first of all, uh, you're going to have a, a checklist. So uh, I have attached this in the Canvas document. You might just want to print it out or like submit it to Canvas or something. Uh, there's going to be a, uh, an ID that you're going to need to have. Uh, you're gonna need to write your name on the exam. There's all this stuff you can go through and, and make a checklist for. Um, let's see, uh, the checklist is two pages, so you'll have to go through that. So. Uh, We'll go through this again at the end, uh, but I just want to make sure that uh, you know this is there. That is in Canvas. Okay, um, so we've got a uh, summary for the resources that are available. Uh, basically, you have the exam day checklist. We've got required documents that you should print or download. We'll go over those in just a second. Starting May 4th, they're going to have a testing demo, so that's on Monday. Uh, we'll talk more about that whenever they release a little bit more details. Um, let's see. Okay, so you're going to get an exam e-ticket, all right? It will look something like uh, this right here. Obviously, yours will not be a biology one. It'll be either AP Physics 1 or AP Physics C. Um, and you'll receive that two days before the exam, okay? On exam day, you'll need, to, you'll need the e-ticket to check in. Uh, and so basically... Uh, it's going to have an account number on it, an APID number on it, uh, and you will need that as well. Uh, you're not to share your e-ticket with anyone because you could lose your chance to test. So please don't do anything like post it on Instagram or post it on Snapchat uh, or anything like that. Uh, that's basically your secure test, so don't post it on social media. All right, I don't know why you would, but don't, all right? Uh, so... Uh, Make sure you save your e-ticket in case you need to request a makeup exam. So make sure you have that e-ticket available uh, to look at. All right. Um, here are the times uh, for the, the exam. So the exam uh, will, for us, the Physics C exam is going to be on Monday, May 11th at 11 a.m. And the Physics 1 exam is going to be on Thursday, May 14th, and it's gonna begin at 3 p.m. Okay, so those are the two times that we're concerned with. Um, so basically, there's going to be a makeup test in June. If for some reason you cannot test then, first of all, let me know so that we can know this, uh, and then second of all, uh, do uh, feel free to, I mean, uh, don't miss the exam, first of all, but if you have to miss the exam, you're sick, you have a family member that's sick, uh, you know, your internet shuts down, something like that, you have a makeup time in June. Uh, if you can't test, don't use your e-ticket for the exam. So, like, you're going to use a different one in June, but they'll need to, like, have the other one to confirm. All right. Uh, oh, uh, so all exams offer a June makeup date. Here are the makeup dates uh, that you uh, can find. Um, so if you need, like if you have a, uh, for some reason can't make one, here are the makeup times for those, uh, those sessions. Okay, so just a reminder, we, we are not terribly worried about the exam schedule because I've told you the time that it'll be at, but everyone is taking it at the, at the exact same time across the world, really. And so uh, if you are in Madrid, you're going to be taking it at 8 p.m. If you're in Los Angeles, you're going to be taking it at 11 a.m. So it just depends on where you're at. Uh, the two tests that we're taking is going to be at 11 a.m. for Physics C and 3 p.m. for Physics 1. Um, let's see. What to expect on this year's exam? Uh, it is not going to be more difficult to make a three, four, or five this year. So the exam score will be, they'll, they'll, they'll weight them similar to previous years. Um, they're never graded on a curve. So we're not really doing, uh, the, there's not really any specific number, uh, 
that get that score, but they're going to try to grade it the same way. So it's not like 15% get a, a 5, 13% or you know 20% get a 4, and 40% get a 3, and the rest fail. Uh, it doesn't work like that. It's still going to be the same way. Uh, uh, they're still going to grade it the same way. So uh, you don't have to worry uh, about uh, about it being tougher. Uh, you also don't have to complete all parts of a question. So if for some reason you were confused by a certain section, then uh, then you can leave that part blank. I know in Physics C, for example, there's some that require a little bit of calculus. Uh, and if you're not doing calculus, you might not be able to do that question. So, uh, but if you... You know, if you're if you're confused on a part, I would highly recommend continuing to read the question because oftentimes there's a few points you can uh, snag just by looking at the rest of the question, even if uh, there's a hard part early on that kind of confuses you. Um, especially like if there's a graph, always try to graph stuff because there's usually three or four points built into a graph uh, that you can you can snag that really just requires you to have basic graphing knowledge. Um, so basically, the exam is going to be shorter. Um, so we've talked about this a lot, but you uh, you have a a much shorter exam. There's just two questions for both of y'all this year: Physics C and Physics One. Just going to have two questions. Uh, that means the test is going to be 40 minutes long, as opposed to an hour and a half for Physics C and then three-hour test for Physics One. So it's a much shorter test. Um, we are your teachers, me and Miss McCombs, are going to have the opportunity to look at your scores, um, and we're going to have the opportunity to review your score and ensure that it was scored fairly. Um, so, uh, you know, if you f don't get what you think you deserve, feel free to send me a message, and I will, you know, take a special interest in looking at yours and making sure that you uh, you get what you deserve. I will advocate for you if you feel you need it, uh, and so uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, the exam questions are viewed uh, are going to be viewed in a web browser. Uh, they recommend Chrome. Uh, so if you don't have Chrome downloaded, the one that AP is recommending is for is for you to use Chrome. I don't know why that's the case, but they uh, said in another part that Chrome was the recommended. So please make sure you have that. Um, you are going to be able to respond in a variety of ways. You can type a response. I don't imagine that's going to be the case for us because that seems like it's more like an English thing. Uh, but you could type and uh, copy and paste a typed response into the blank. You can attach a typed response. So for example, if you wanted to, you could uh, write it up in Notability and attach that. Or you can attach photos of a handwritten response. So another thing you can do is just like have the question open on one device, handwrite the answers uh, on a piece of paper, and then take a picture of it and upload it. All right. Uh, that's the reason, by the way, that we're practicing using the, uh, in AP1, we're practicing using the uh, My AP thing for this most recent free response assignment so that you can get used to doing that. All right. Uh, so these just tell you how to do the copy and paste. Um, so there's just some, some details on how to do it. Uh, it tells you you can type it into various uh, Google Docs, Microsoft Words, Notes, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so you need to make sure that you type your ID and initials at the top of the response. That's very important. And when the timer has five minutes remaining, copy and paste your response into the space indicated. Um, so uh, the this recommends if you're doing this, you need to have like two windows open. And in window one, uh, you'll have your uh, test. And on the other one, you'll have your Google Docs. All right. Uh, if you're using the attach a document, uh, it's the same basic process, but you need to make sure your document is saved as one of these types. Uh, if you have a question about how that works, let me know. If you're using Notability, you can choose to export it as a PDF. That's probably the easiest thing to do. You still need to have your ID typed at the top. Um, and uh, you will need to have the exam question open because it has the timer displayed for you. All right, That's just something that's going to be important to have. Uh, finally, if you're attaching a photo, um, you uh, you can use it on a smart tablet, smartphone, or tablet. Uh, basically, 
uh, you will need to do one, one page per photo. So if your answer has multiple pages, you'll need to take one photo per page. Um, you still need to have your ID and initials at the, uh, and the page number at the top of each page. So if you have a multiple page response, you need to put the page number and you need to put your Apple, uh, not your Apple ID, your AP ID there as well. Make sure you're using a dark pen. I would it doesn't say so, but I would recommend using a black pen, uh, like, like a nice heavy black pen uh, or a very dark pencil. Uh, make sure that you're not writing in, uh, make sure that you're pushing down hard enough. You don't want it to be too light for them to be able to read it. Um, you're taking your response with a vertical orientation. Uh, that's very specific. They want it with a vertical orientation uh, and not landscape. Okay. Uh, it needs to be submitted as a JPEG or a uh, like any of those formats. Uh, I think normally it's either a JPG or a JPEG that your camera, your phone, or your tablet does. Uh, so it shouldn't be that big of a problem. Um, it does have a maximum of five photos per test question. So just be aware of that. Um, I don't think that'll come up here, but just in case. Okay. Uh, don't do music theory. Let's see. World language exam. That's not us. Testing with accommodations. Uh, if you have any approved accommodations, please get in contact with me and we can try to figure out how that's going to work for you. Um, I, uh, me or Miss McCombs will be glad to work with you, but if you have some, let us know. Uh, Let's see, requesting a makeup exam. If you have an ex issue on exam day, you can fill out a AP makeup re exam request. So for example, if your internet dies, uh, you can have a makeup exam request. You must have your original e-ticket while filling out the form and you have to submit it within 48 hours. All right, um, so if you qualify, they'll let you know uh, by the week of May 25th. Uh, do not call AP, uh, so they will, they will get with you. Uh, let's see, simply running out of time to submit response is not a valid reason. Uh, so this is for like emergencies, like you're in the middle of the test and you suddenly get violently ill or you're in the middle of the test, your Wi-Fi dies or your iPad dies or your computer dies. Uh, that's what that's for. Okay. Um, the exam screen will guide students step by step on test day from the movement uh, from the moment they click their e-ticket. Most students will be able to navigate the test using only the information on the preceding slides. Uh, unexpected events may occur. Uh, the remaining slides provide further details and tips to encourage. Okay, so essentially it should be fairly intuitive. Uh, that's the goal. Like so, once you open it, once you put your e-ticket in, it should be fairly intuitive on what to do. Uh, but uh, if it's not, they'll uh, that that's what the makeup is for basically five steps to take before exam day okay so here's the five steps so review your contact information in your my in your my peak thing uh, your your my P page uh, check your technology make sure that you have a device that you're comfortable with and that you trust all right uh, practice submitting your response so on May 4th again uh, through May 11th we're going uh, to be practicing uh, the we'll be practicing that uh, to make sure that uh, you, you have some ability to do that, that will be part of your grade. We're basically going to give you that practice exam and let you submit that so that you have uh, some, some experience doing what we're going to do on exam day. All right, gather what you need for each exam. Uh, so I would recommend going and printing up whatever they have available here. I would also recommend just having available uh, and it might mean that you have it on a different device or you print it up. I would recommend printing up any notes that we've done uh, just so you can flip to it. If, we're, if the problem's over energy, you can flip to your energy notes. If the problem's over force, you can flip to your force notes. I would recommend having that available, but I would recommend having it available on another device or print it up, all right? Like if you're planning on using your iPad to take the test, I would not recommend also using your iPad to scroll through notability. Uh, so if you're trying, uh, or if you want to have those notes available, I'd recommend maybe getting an iP a laptop out, uh, send your notes as a PDF to that laptop, and that way you can open them real quick and scroll through them if you need to. The test is very, very fast, so you need to be able to access those things very, very quickly, um, which is why if you are able to, printing it's probably the best idea, and just like have it sorted into 
here's force, here's energy, here's momentum. And then that way, if the test is over a certain thing, you can just snag the, the relevant notes and look at them. Um, I understand that printing is probably not an option for everybody, but again, I want to stress, you need to make sure that you have those like references on another device than the one you're using to submit because it's just going to be too complicated to go back and forth uh, while the test is going on. It's just you're too short of time to do that. Uh, okay, so review your contact information. Just make sure everything's correct there. Uh, check your tech. Uh, so make sure your device you're using is uh, up to date. Uh, I would recommend if you're using your iPad to make sure that you are uh, to make sure that you have uh, it updated, the most recent version. Uh, this isn't for us, but for English maybe. Make sure you have Grammarly removed if you use Grammarly. Uh, so when choosing between handwriting and typing, keep in mind uh, this won't require. There's no. Gr oh, dang it! There's no graphs or diagrams this time, so you won't get any free points for a graph. Uh, but uh, you may be more comfortable handwriting responses in, in the maths and sciences, basically. Uh, in most other subjects, using a smartphone requires scrolling back and forth within a question. So you might not want to use a smartphone because you might have to, it might be a little bit annoying. Uh, so that's what they recommend. Um, they're recommending a desktop, uh, but up to you. I figure if you're using a desktop and you're trying to take a picture, though, it's going to be kind of tucked. So uh, I would probably recommend, if you're planning on taking pictures of stuff, I'd probably recommend taking the test on your iPad so that you can just pick it up and take a picture real quick. Uh, okay, so if you're going to be typing, make sure that you have a way to type uh, and a, like a way to type quickly. If you don't have a keyboard, uh, make sure that you can type fast on the screen if you're using the iPad. Uh, make sure that you have it saved in one of these document forms. Uh, make Just check it and make sure that it's got an ending like that. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, make sure you're using paper that's standard size. I don't know why that's important, but there you go. Make sure it's your standard paper. Uh, oh, they do say two, number two pencil, blue or black ink. All right. Um, and... Let's see, that's good. If you are, if you have more than one page, please number them. Okay, uh, we're gonna do this more later, but we're gonna practice submitting uh, an exam next week. Uh, so that'll be good. Let's see, on exam day, uh, what to have ready. So you need to have your <clears throat> e-ticket, uh, you need to have your completed uh, exam day checklist, so that one that was at the beginning. Uh, you need to have a device. You need to have a browser. Again, they're recommending Chrome. You need to have an internet or cell connection. Uh, let's see. Required for type responses, you need to just make sure you have one of those available. Again, you can use any thing that you want to. The deal is, is that it has to be fast. So, uh, again, 25 minutes for first question, 15 minutes for the second question. You don't have time to, like, uh, scroll through your notes for an hour, you know? All right. So, uh, let's see if we can figure out what's required. All right. Uh, basically, on the Physics 1 exam, you need to have the formulas, and you're permitted a calculator. Um, for Physics C, uh, same thing. Uh, you'll have the table, which is basically the formula chart, and you'll be permitted a calculator. Um, I'll make sure to have those uh, submitted to you or like put in in a file for you uh, that might be good to know, or sorry, good to have. All right, we're not, uh, let's see. Uh, so some advice about optional resources. You can use any of those things that are listed there. Uh, we, they're recommending not to do internet searches. The reason, they, I mean, you could. Uh, they're just saying that it's going to take more time. Uh, again, this is quick. Got to stress that. This is very, very fast. So you don't have time to go, if you don't know what a moment of inertia is, you don't have time to go on the internet and search what a good moment of inertia is. Uh, no copy and pasting from websites. Uh, don't use internet facts and opinions. Uh, so probably Wikipedia is not the best option. Reddit certainly isn't. 
Uh, the less time you spend answering, uh, the more time you spend searching the web, the less time you got answering questions. So I would not recommend using the internet as a resource. Uh, I would recommend solely staying on notes and stuff. All right. Uh, all right, so on May 4th, you're going to receive a confirmation email uh, and your Apple ID, uh, or dang, I mean, not the Apple ID, your, your AP ID, uh, and you're, it's basically just start confirming that you are taking a test. Two days before the exam, they'll send you the e-ticket. Um, so again, I'll, I'll have this posted for you. All right, exam day. All right, 30 minutes before your exam, local time. So for us, APC, that's going to be 11, uh, sorry, 1030. And for uh, AP1, that's going to be uh, 230. You're going to have a check-in where you're going to use the e-ticket to check in, you're going to complete identity information, and then you're going to wait for the automatic exam to automatically begin. Um, so this is us right here. We're the two-question exam. So uh, when the exam begins, so right at exam time beginning, question one will appear. You will read the question, you'll develop a response, and then... At the end of 25 minutes, you're going to have five minutes to submit that, all right? Five minutes seems like a long time, but I guarantee you, you're going to be stressed out, and that's going to go by, like, instantly. 15 minutes for the, after that five minutes is up, they're going to post the 15-minute exam. Then there's going to be another five-minute exam, or five minutes to submit the response, and then it's complete. So this is going to take uh, a total of 50 minutes, but it will go by basically instantly. Uh, so just be aware of that. That five minutes is going to go by so quick. So just be really, really prepared to submit that uh, as soon as that 25 minutes are up. Okay, not music theory. Not a world language. Okay, so testing environment. I uh, recommend move, moving all distractions. Uh, put the do not disturb setting on all your devices. You don't want grandma calling you in the middle of the exam, all right? Uh, true story. My sister was taking an exam for her uh, for her counseling degree, and my grandmother, who has not called her in probably three or four years, decided that at that time it would be the perfect opportunity to call her. And so, even though her phone was on silent, uh, since her phone was connected through her uh, Apple computer, it rang on her Apple computer, and her test was voided. Uh, it wasn't a huge deal; they just they just made her take it another day. But you know. You don't want stuff like that happening. So make sure that do not disturb setting is on. Uh, make sure your device is plugged in. Uh, if you have limited net, uh, limited bandwidth, uh, make sure your 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 family has everything else turned off. So it might be a good idea while you're taking this to ask the rest of your family to get off of YouTube and Netflix and and whatnot uh, while uh, taking the exam. It's just 50 minutes. They'll be okay. All right, exam security. Um, they're going to be checking for, they, they've got some pretty sophisticated methods for checking and seeing if you're cheating. To be quite honest, it's going to be difficult to cheat in a 50-minute session. Y'all are very talented, I'm aware, and by y'all I just mean children in general. Uh, y'all are very talented at finding ways to do it, so I'm sure that it will happen at some point, but they have very, very uh, clear uh, and, uh, and good algorithms developed to try to detect it, especially if people are using the same wording and stuff like that. Um, students who are found violating it will have their names reported to college admissions uh, and AP exam scores canceled. So basically, uh, they're going to put a black mark on you if you, if you cheat. So don't cheat. Uh, 30 minutes before the exam, you're going to check in. So you're just going to enter your Apple ID. This is what it should look like. Um, Answering questions on the exam. For most exams, the question is divided into parts. Uh, you may use spell check and grammar check, but these do not provide an advantage. Let's see. Exams with more than one question. You won't be able to move to the second question until the time for the first question is fully elapsed. So if you are just lost on the first question, you got to sit there and wait until the se for the second question. Uh, managing your time. During the exam, you'll see a timer at the bottom of the screen showing how much time remains. Um, 
five minutes before time is up, the timer will turn red and you'll see a pop-up reminding you to submit your response. Stop where you are and copy your attached. So like as soon as this pops up, as soon as the thing says time to submit your work pops up, you should stop and try to submit. Uh, look at this right here. You can still earn a five even if you didn't finish the response. So if you didn't finish the response, go ahead and submit it. You don't want to continue working uh, up until there's like 20 seconds left and then not have time to submit because then you're not going to get credit. So basically, as soon as you see this red mark come up, stop where you're at and, uh, and submit it. If you do not submit it, you will not get credit. All right. If you lose track of time, you do not get to make use that as a reason to request a makeup exam. Okay. Let's see, submitting your response. So this is the, the way submitting your response will look. Uh, you will be attaching documents or photos, um, and you should be able to submit it using uh, this page. All right, what could go wrong? So if you accidentally close your browser, your device crashes, or you temporarily lose internet access, you can quickly click on exam ticket to return to the exam. So supposedly, if something happens, you can click on the exam ticket again, and it'll just bring you back to where you started. Don't refresh your browser during the exam, all right? Keep it on the same thing. Um, continue the exam if you do have a disruption, and if you feel it negatively affected you, you can request a makeup. Do not call the customer service centers. There's going to be too many things going on for them to help. All right, exam scores, credit, and placement. Um, so this is just information about how they're going to score it uh, and some information about colleges saying that they will be glad to recognize the AP exam still. Um, all right. I think that's it. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the end of this. Or sorry, this is the end of this part. So then we're going to look at that uh, checklist again. Okay, so this is the checklist. I just want to go through this in depth now that we've gone through everything. So you'll have your app, uh, your your eight character AP ID, and you can find that at the at the My AP College Board. You're going to write the name of your exam. So Physics C, Mechanics, or Physics 1. Um, you're going to write the exam date, the local time, uh, and the local exam start time. So basically, remember the exam date for, uh, you can go back to that page at the beginning and put in the exam date. I'll also write it at the bottom of, uh, I'll write it into the canvas uh, so that you can see it. Um, and then... Am I ready to test? So check and make sure you have your e-ticket. Check and make sure your device is plugged in. Uh, make sure that it opens in Chrome or those things. But remember, Chrome is what they preferred. Uh, you've practiced the exam demo. We're going to do that next week. Uh, if typing the exam, make sure that you have a Google Doc or a Word Doc or something available. And that you've typed the initials at the top of each document. All right? So type the API at the top and your initials. So like, I don't know. CD42698, uh, and then make sure you have your initials at the top. So, like, it would need to be something like that. I don't know. I just made up that Apple ID. Or, not Apple ID. Why do I keep saying Apple ID? That AP ID. Uh, but you would need to have something like that written. Uh, if I will be handwriting uh, my exam, I have pre prepared one set of pages, uh, two set of pages for... So, basically, you'll need two sets of pages, uh, and you'll also need to have the eight character ID. If you have more than one play, page, please put, the, please put the page number on each page as well as the Apple ID or the AP ID. Goodness gracious, Apple ID. Been Pavlov dogged into thinking about Apple IDs. Um, I have reviewed the list of uh, required materials for this specific exam. So we've gone over that. You can have the, the formula chart. I would recommend having all your notes available. Uh, I would not recommend um, I would not recommend trying to use the internet. I have reviewed the exam security guidelines and understand the consequences. Remember, if you try to cheat, they're going to blacklist you at universities. All right. Um, if I've been approved by the college board to test with accommodations, I have said that. Now, do me a favor, and if you do have accommodations, please let me know. If I'm taking the AP Music exam, 
you're not, so don't worry about it. Or you, if you are, you're not doing it for me. Uh, you're not doing the world history exam either. Uh, during the exam, once the exam is started, I will not refresh the browser. All right, I will keep the exam open on my device so I can see the timer. I see the on-screen warning uh, is almost up five minutes before a deadline. I will stop working at five minutes and continue and submit. Uh, I understand that if I do not attach or paste my response and click submit, click submit, some of you are uh, iffy on that, you will get no points. If I accidentally close my browser or tab temporarily, lose my internet connection or experience some other disruption, I will click my e-ticket to rejoin the exam. If I can't rejoin the exam, I will request a makeup exam. Okay, you're not doing this. After the exam, I will sign into my IP and indicate the colleges or universities uh, or scholarship programs that should receive my free score report. The deadline for that is June 20th, and I will report information about cheating attempts to College Board. So if you want to, or if you uh, detect cheating, you should be a narc and contact them. All right, so I think that sums it up. I realize this was long and in depth, but you probably needed to hear this, and I think that's it. So go deer.